Welcome to the July 15th, 2024 uh, uh, Committee on Community Resources meeting. Um, I'm Council Clemmer and I'm the chair of this group and um, I welcome everybody. And um, uh, we called the meeting to order and uh, someone has to do that, right? Yeah, could somebody, anybody want to call the meeting to order? Oh, no, I think that's you. I mean, that's I'm going to call the meeting to order. And um, Laura, could you please do the roll call? Councillor Clemmer. Here. Councillor Perry. Here. Councillor Dobbs. Here. And Councillor Rothenberg. Here. Um, and this meeting is being audio and video recorded. Um, this... Okay. Okay, there's no, is there anybody um, that would like to make any public comments at this point? Yep. Okay. Please state your name and um, where you're from. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm Penny Geis. I live in Leeds, and I'm a member of the Northampton Fiber Optic Committee Coalition. So we met with this group earlier, and I want to emphasize some of the things that I think they already support, but that are very important to us. And that is free or low cost access for low income people. And they had indicated they would use other programs to verify people's low income. And we think that's fine. So the SNAP nutrition assistance program, the school lunch subsidies, the subsidized housing section eight and this, and I hope we didn't talk about this before, but Northampton has a tax write-off program for senior citizens of low income. And so that would be another good way to check somebody's low income eligibility. We'd also like to be sure that Northampton Open Media has support at least equal to what they get now. So that would be in the future adjusted for inflation so that they can continue to operate because they won't have the subsidy from Comcast that they have now. So thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to yeah. make any comments? Sorry. Sorry about that. Hi. I am Mark Hamill, and I, along with me and Penny over here, are uh, founding members of our coalition. Mm -hmm. So, since 2017, we're trying to coax the city into building a municipal network. As you know, um, we had some success the last mayoral election, but was also approved in a a, uh, initiative to allow the city to create a municipal light plant, which would serve as a way to create a municipal network. And that was 91 point something percent of voters voted for it. So it's got overwhelming support. So we kept hearing, we kept uh, talking to people and we heard a number of common themes and Penny's talked about a couple of them. Uh, one of them is privacy. People want to know that if they're going to use your net, the uh, Gateway Fiber net Network, that their privacy is going to be maintained. And I think we heard last time that uh, you were planning to offer assurances in that regard. Um, but let me know if that's not correct. We want to make sure that no subscriber information will be collected, shared, sold, or used for marketing purposes, because people really don't want that. Um, another thing that we're concerned about is uh, universal access. 
So we have, uh, we want to make sure that every business, every resident and every business in Northampton would have access to this high speed network. Um, and that includes people who are probably not terribly profitable for them to serve. There are people in very rural areas of Northampton who will still want to get fiber service, but uh, it may be expensive to move, put cable out there. Uh, for example, roads that have farms on them, those sorts of places. Um, so we would like to hear from you about uh, whether you're committed to serving everyone, including people who aren't who are probably very remote and don't have communities around them with very many people. We don't want to leave anybody out in the cold. And we just want to hear from you that you will eventually at least ensure that you will serve anybody who wants, who lives in the city and who uh, who wants the, the service. So those are my um, comments. I think uh, Lee Felter over here might want to expand on some of these. Thank you. My name is Lee Felcher. I'm a resident of Florence. Um, also a member of the coalition with Mark and Penny. Uh, so I've got another uh, couple items to comment about. Um, one, uh, this is uh, from our last meeting. We did not mention this this point. It's a new, new thing that uh, we, we were discussing and came up with. Um, but with uh, extreme weather comes the possibility of disasters, uh, such as fires, floods, down trees, power outages. Um, if at some future date the city chooses to put in place some remote sensing and monitoring equipment throughout the city um, in order to monitor and possibly decrease the time required for responding to disasters. Uh, we'd like Gateway to give network access to the city in order to attach those uh, monitoring and sensing devices in order to create a disaster preparedness system. So we don't know that the city has that agenda yet, but we're interested in that. And if the city should uh, choose to do that some future date that we'd like to know that Gateway is on board with that. Um, Another uh, item, uh, because of the recent, this we did discuss at the meeting we had with you recently, um, because of the recent Supreme Court reversal of the Chevron decision, um, the net neutrality rules that the FCC has put into place will likely be challenged in court. Um, if those rules don't survive a court challenge, uh, providers like Gateway will not be required to adhere to them uh, anymore. Uh, we'd like to know that um, net neutrality rules would be followed on a network in Northampton, uh, regardless of whether the laws are in place or not for, for that. Uh, and those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there's no other public comment, um, and the minutes of the um, previous meeting are up yet, so we'll just uh, wait for next time. And um, anybody, um, any of the councilors have any updates or um, announcements from the our committee? Is anybody here? Thanks. Um, does anybody have any announcements? No. Thanks. Um, okay, um, I have a couple. Um, just that there's some cooling centers. Um, tomorrow's supposed to be really hot, over 100 with a heat index. So it's um, Division of Community Care, Forbes Library, Mana Community Center, and the Northampton Police um, Department in the lobby will all be open. Um, with air conditioning. And the sidewalk sale is July 25th to 28th, and there's gonna be food, music, and some really good deals. And it's a lot of fun, so stop by. Um, um De uh, Deb, would it be okay if I made an, an announcement when you're done? I, I realize yeah. I, do, I do have one, sorry. Yeah, go for it. Okay, thanks. 
Um, tomorrow, the uh, Disability Commission is hosting a disability resource fair. Uh, it's over Zoom. Um, it's from 6, to, uh, 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Um, and um, we'll have presenters there to talk about uh, different resources for disabled people in Northampton that would be uh, really useful to them if they have access issues or anything like that. Um, so uh, it's in celebration of Disability Pride Month. And um, once again, yeah, it's tomorrow from 6 to 7.30 and we'd love to see you there. Where do they, where could you find the link for it? Um, so it's on Zoom and if you go to, um, if you, um, you can contact Keith Benoit, the ADA coordinator for the link. Um, I can mention it now, I guess um, it's the meeting ID on Zoom is 257-704-6101 and the passcode is 300-851. And I think there's a link online for that too, like on Facebook and on the city website. Okay, great, thank you. Yep, thanks. Anything else? Oh. You mentioned the two libraries, the schooling centers as well. Um, I mentioned Forbes. Lily Library as well as both the DCC living room. And, uh, I did DCC and Lily Library is, is also a cooling center. And um, the police, Mana, Forbes, DCC, and Lily. Good. Thank you. So now we can um, get to our guests tonight. Um, Gateway Fiber is here to discuss a proposal to construct fiber optic ne network to serve the homes and businesses in Northampton. Um, so uh, Derek Leffert will be speaking, and he's the head of uh, government affairs for Gateway Fiber. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be back here in Northampton. Um, uh, so Derek Leffert, head of government affairs for Gateway Fiber, introduce Brian uh, and Jennifer, I'll actually let them introduce themselves and kind of give you their titles and, and tell you what they do before we kind of move on with the show here if you want. Hello. Thanks for having us here today. Yeah. Ryan Johnson, and I'm uh, head of sales for the Northeast region. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jennifer Gannett, and I'm the operations manager for Gateway Fiber in Massachusetts. So we, we greatly appreciate the, the uh, invitation to come back. Uh, Brian and I met with uh, several folks here uh, a little over a month ago uh, to kind of discuss what we'd planned to do here in the city of Northampton. We're excited about the opportunity that we have in front of us, and we think that it's going to be a big boost to, to Northampton and look forward to really getting started on it. Uh, what I will say that uh, this is something that we've been looking at. Massachusetts is a market that we've been looking at for quite some time. We are a Missouri-based company. Uh, started, was founded in Missouri in 2019, uh, and over the past couple of years, we have uh, have our new markets team has really taken a, a look uh, at all all markets all across the United States to determine what fit within our footprint, what was uh, the right market for us, uh, and we have identified several communities here in Massachusetts that we have already begun to invest in and intend to invest a significant amount more in over the over the coming uh, months and years. Um, Northampton just so happens to be the first of those. Uh, so here in Northampton, we are about a year or so into the process already. Uh, we've already invested about $3 million here in Northampton. Um, there's a process that we go through. We have to collect poll, poll data, and then we submit poll applications, and we go through utility design. Uh, really, so there's that's about a, a year-long process that we have to go through and have to invest uh, a fair, fairly significant amount of money before we make a final decision as to whether or not we're going to do that. But we've we've already reached that point. We've begun the make ready process here in Northampton. That is typically what takes the the most significant amount of time as it relates to the whole process of, of getting fiber. The construction process, uh, believe it or not, is is seemingly shorter than all of the other pieces of it. It's it's really the preparation work and the work that goes into that uh, that takes the most significant amount of time. Uh, so once that make ready is done, there's an expectation that we would begin uh, construction. Uh, I think we're shooting for a fall time frame for that sometime in September or October with a three to four month-ish schedule. Um, we'll do it in two different phases. We have uh, phase one and phase two. Phase one, I believe, is 5,000. Correct me if I'm wrong on any of this, Brian. Phase one is, I believe, 5,000 passings, which is a passing is considered a home or a business. Uh, phase two would be would be 4,000. And then beyond that, uh, depending on, you know, uptake, depending on our success, uh, that, that di dictates to us how much additional things that we can do. So, uh, we we do we are committed to to extending it to as many people as we can. 
Uh, obviously, we're going to begin in the aerial markets first because that's the the, the most reasonable the, and the quickest route to deployment here. Uh, so we'll begin there. Um, and then, you know, I, we do realize that there's going to be some underground that's out there and we'll hopefully uh, we'll have uh, enough success where we can also uh, attack that as as needed. Uh, as far as Gateway is concerned, Gateway is not a typical internet service provider. We are very, we're, our, our CEO uh, is, he lives in the same town he was born and raised in. It's a town of less than 300 people, 20 minutes down the road from our headquarters. We are laser focused on being a part of the communities that we're in. Uh, and I think that's been evidenced by the, the number of communities that we've already been in and, and the partnerships that we have, not only with the businesses and the residents, but also uh, with the cities and, and the elected officials and uh, all of the individuals that, that we're working with uh, to try to make the communities a better place. We do realize that that broadband Internet can be very transformative for your citizens, whether it's the, the use of health care, whether it's for education, whether it's for remote work, whether it's economic development. Whatever the case may be, we do realize that that, that uh, high-speed internet is is a transformative thing, and we're excited about bringing that here uh, to Northampton. I will tell you that in terms of pricing, when you price us against uh, any competitor that's out there, we're going to be substantially less expensive uh, than what your competitor is. So right now, our lowest package um, is a $65, 300 megabyte, and that's a symmetrical 300 megabyte up or down, and 65 a month. Uh, our 600 megabyte package is 75 a month. Our one gigabyte package uh, is 90. And then we have a two gigabyte package that not a lot of people choose. But if you're a heavy gamer or something like that and require a lot of bandwidth, uh, they go with that. And that's 150 a month. That price that you see, that's not a promotional price. That's not a contract price. That's not something we don't say you're going to pay 65 a month and then we're going to come in. Uh, and charge you taxes and fees and all these other things on top of that. We tell you 65 a month, uh, and that's what it's going to be. That's what's going to come out of your account. And again, that's not something that we're going to tell you. And then a year from now, we're going to say, never mind on the 65 a month. It's 80, now. It's 80 a month now. Uh, we don't charge any installation fees. Uh, the only additional fees that we charge, we provide a single router with um, with the the service. But if you if you have a larger home and require more routers, we charge basically five bucks a month extra for additional routers. One router should be more than sufficient for most homes, uh, but there are a number of uh, homes that maybe one router is not quite enough. But if, if you're just using the one router, it's, it's going to be 65 a month for that 300 megabyte package. Uh, as far as our reliability is concerned, we have a 99.9998% uptime, which is one of the most reliable when you look at all across the United States, whether you're looking at speeds, whether you're looking at latency, uh, whether you're looking at average downloads, uploads, uh, we're in the, in the top tier of, of, of ISPs all throughout the country. Uh, and that's basically uh, due to the fact that the, the way our, our, our system was built uh, is, is designed to, to withstand a lot of things. We have a lot of redundancies in place, uh, and we make sure that we are using scalable technology. So what, you know, if, if in the future there's a need for a 10 gigabyte service, we have the ability to upgrade to that if, uh, if, if, if it's needed. As far as um, employment, I know that's you know a lot of a lot of folks have questions about that. I think we estimated between fifty to sixty uh, employees, not necessarily here in Northampton, but across our Massachusetts fit, footprint. Uh, and the majority of our of our investment is taking place uh, in Western Massachusetts at, at this this point. So that could change. I mean that, that that's subject to to change at any time. But the majority of our investment right now is taking place. Uh, here in the Western in Western Mass. Um, as far as digital equity, um, we we talk about that a little bit. Uh, we do realize that there are a number of folks that are that need access that can't necessarily afford it. One of the things that Gateway is doing uh, after the after the expiration of the ACP program, uh, Gateway is taking a look at what we can do to provide a low cost offering. And I, I believe we, we spoke to them last time about it and, and continue to remain committed to, to exploring that. So previously there was a $30 a month subsidy for the ACP that expired in May. Uh, we're taking a look at a, a lower, like a 100 megabyte offering, which is more than adequate for what would be needed, whether it's remote work, whether it's healthcare, whether it's education, whatever it is. Um, we were taking a look at that and, and seeing if we can get a, 
a price very similar or lower than what they would have paid previously under ACP. Um, as far as net neutrality and privacy concerns, um, Gateway has never provided preferential treatment in any way, shape, or form to any of our, whether it's business customers, whether it's residential customers, whatever it may be, we have not provided any sort of a, uh, a, a, a preferential uh, treatment or prefer preferential service to any one particular uh, customer over another. So we've always been compliant with net neutrality rules, regardless of the Chevron decision and any subsequent things that are fall out from that. Uh, we, we will maintain net neutrality and we also maintain privacy. As it relates to marketing, we do not sell contact information. We don't sell any of that information. However, we do use um, the information internally. Uh, so we have information internally, so we'll use it to market, you know, whether it's, you know, a, a new service that we're offering or whatever, we'll use it internally for our own marketing purposes, uh, but that's never sold or, or uh, loaned to anyone else. Um, I believe the other, the only other thing I was missing was the early warning system that Lee was, was had mentioned Part of our process of uh, being good partners with the community is identifying opportunities like that. So in circumstances where the city has a need, uh, we certainly want to we want to work with the city and and do everything that we can to be a good community partner and, and a good resource for the community. I, 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 what that looks like, I, I'm not sure. I mean, if this is going to require them, uh, you know, a ten million dollar investment from us. Maybe we'd have to have a conversation about that. I'm not sure, uh, but if it's you know if it's reasonable and it fits within uh, you know something that's 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 feasible for us, then you know we've we've certainly we we've extended service free service to community parks, uh, provided you know different spots for folks to access internet that that may otherwise not have had access. Um, so we'll we'll do what we can to work with the city to identify those areas. And I think there was one other thing that may have been mentioned that I didn't yeah, cover. Northampton Open Media. Yeah, the the NOM, the Northampton Open Media. That's another thing. Um, <clears throat> it, it's too soon for us to say what kind of impact our entrance into the market would have on that franchise fee that that Comcast pays. Uh, I know that it's it's fairly common for folks to kind of cut the cord when there's another option. Uh, and so we do recognize that. And again, that would be something that, that we would take a look at and see, you know, how we could partner with the community to to help serve that that need that's here. So, you know, not knowing what those numbers look like at this point, I, I can't give any sort of commitment to the community at this point, like what we would be willing to do. However, it is something, you know, we have a, a, a foundation called Gateway Gives, uh, and that would be something that would be kind of aligned with our, our mission for Gateway Gives, which is for us to give back to the community, uh, the, the communities that we're in. So with that, I'd be happy to take any questions unless Brian or, or Jennifer have any additional things to add. Yeah, you're great, Derek. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Derek. Yep. Um, and do any of the counselors from Community Resources have questions? Uh, Jeremy, I uh, Councilor Dobbs. Uh, thank you. Um, I was very interested in what you when you were talking about the um, healthcare <clears throat> healthcare benefits of gate of of gateway fiber, and um, like um, I, I had I was also looking on your website before the meeting, and I found it really interesting the, about telehealth and uh, the benefits of that. And um, so I was just wondering for the for the people watching and listening, if you could just maybe just expound a little bit, uh, expand a little bit about that, and talk about the healthcare benefits. Yeah. So. There, there's a number of, you know, as we saw with, with COVID, there was a, a lot of need for um, higher bandwidth internet as a result of more folks doing, you know, whether it's FaceTime visits or uh, Zoom meetings like this. Uh, and and so that really, I, more than anything, that and remote education for kids, I believe, was probably <laughs> the two biggest drivers for broadband deployment, or, or at least the 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 more expeditious broadband deployment, uh, because I think that, that it was it was demonstrated that it was very much needed uh, during that time. So with our service, and, and it's not exclusive to our service, with any sort of broadband service, uh, you're going to have that ability to have uninterrupted um, high speed access to where there's no, you know, a lot of the a lot of the telehealth they'll do exams, whether it's, you know, the, they'll turn the, the the camera around and they'll they'll you know, the, the physician will examine somebody over the phone and look for things, uh, whether it's, you know, uh, uh, 
communicating and, and transferring files, medical files or x-rays or images, um, CAT scans, things like that. Uh, the, the, the broadband capabilities are endless as it relates to telehealth. And, you know, that it's, again, that's not exclusive to us, but having that ability for your citizens uh, and your healthcare providers in the community to really leverage that as part of their, uh, as part of a tool in their toolbox, I think is, is a very, very important uh, and critical thing that, that we'll be able to offer and that your, your citizens will now have access to as a result of, of broadband. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, fun, very exciting and uh, great service to the community. Thanks. Great. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody else have questions? Okay. Um, do any of the other... Oh, Councillor Clemmer? Yes, Councillor Rothenberg. Do you... I'm just wondering if you uh, could speak to sort of the procedural posture of where we are as a city in looking at this and um, anything about that as it may relate to this being on the agenda for today. Do you, do you want clarification on the question? Uh, I, was that directed oh, to yes, me? To you, yeah. I think she's directing it. Uh, yeah, I thought she had. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, could yes, you? yes. So could you tell me more about um, the thinking of putting this on the agenda and where we might be as a city in looking into this kind of a service? It's a service for the city to have uh, less expensive and an option to broadband and an option to Comcast. Um, Councillor Jared and I spoke about this and um, we thought community resources would be a good place to host this group. And, um, and Councilor Kramer, I think so do we have any updates about sort of our process of the city's um, broadband pursuit? Could you say that last part again? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Of the city's broadband pursuit. That's a perfect way to frame it. I, do we have any updates? Where Where are we? In the process? Yeah. Is she talking about the MLP? Is that what she's talking about? Do you want me to try that's and say it? Do you want to talk? Sure. Um, <clears throat> so, as you know, the city has, uh, I think you you guys very accurate. Alan, I'm oh, the people on Zoom will be able to hear you unless you have a microphone. Yeah. Do you know? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Cell phone, they're all sharing it. They I don't know. Yeah. Uh, just so everyone who can't see me on camera knows who's talking. Um, this has been a multi year process, um, and the Broadband Coalition has been incredible throughout. Um, and and I think you guys gave a pretty decent recap of sort of where we had been to here. Most recently, the, the city contracted for and received both a marketing and a feasibility study um, that looked at what it would cost for the city to implement this ourselves. And, you know, in the face of many uh, competing priorities of the city, uh, Mayor Shera was weighing the options of that, I think, when we learned uh, and we started to um, actually get wind that you all were starting to uh, reserve space on the polls because there is not unlimited space on polls. Um, so the make ready process and the over a million and a half dollars you guys have invested so far um, certainly changes the math a little bit for the city in terms of cost potentially to for if the city were to uh, approach its own make ready uh, and estimates to build the system and, and there were lots of financing options that were were put forward for this. We're in the 30 million or so range for the city to construct this. And so there would have been some borrowing or, and I think when Gateway Fiber had taken the initiative and uh, indicated they were coming, there was some recognition that one of the chief goals of uh, the municipal broadband was competition with our monopoly provider. And so there is some sense, and I think the, the broadband coalition shares this, that we have achieved some of what we were at after uh, in your entering this market. Uh, hopefully some of the surveys we did and the 91% the vote that was referenced earlier was part of your math as you choose to say this is a market ripe for a competitor to the incumbent provider. And so I think the city is now in a position to see what happens next with you and how well you serve the market uh, as, and then we would see 
what remains to be done to make sure that the the entire city is served, that the city is served equitably. Um, those are still the goals of the mayor and of the coalition. And I think that you guys did a fantastic job representing those tonight. Um, so that is, I think, where we stand on municipal broadband at this moment. Is that helpful? Great. To Thank, that is helpful. And actually, you left off right where my next question is, which is, can anyone speak to how the public housing, which is state owned, might be able to loop into this or not? So uh, I can give you a, just kind of a, as far as we're concerned, I'm not sure where those are at along the path. Uh, I, one of the things that we do with digital equity uh, in the communities that we're in and, and plan to do is to make sure that we're providing access, maybe not to 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 every single, you know, we're not going to provide free access to every single home and business. That's just that's just not possible. But providing uh, maybe a computer with high speed internet access in a, a common area uh, in maybe the public housing where if someone needs to to, to take a, a healthcare appointment or they need to do some schooling or something like that, that they would have access to that. Uh, that would be a part of our community outreach initiatives, uh, but <clears throat> a lot of that is largely dependent upon where that where that is in relation to where our where our, our passings are at the moment. So if we're if we're passing it, like we we can't go, we can't build something three miles out of the way to go grab a, a single spot and 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 do that. But if it's along the path and it, and it makes sense for us, then that's something that, that we would certainly consider. And can you just expand a little bit on the, I mean, is it, is it hypothetically possible that you could wire up all of the residents in public housing if you had an appropriate contract with the state, or is there something that sort of physically would prohibit that, assuming it's on this loop that you're talking about? So if, if, with respect to what we call MDUs, which is multiple dwelling units, which is essentially what a, a low-income housing uh, would be, um, if there is some sort of a availability with a state where they're providing maybe some sort of a subsidy, uh, to, to help with that, and it's a long route, then yeah, we, we would, we would certainly consider that. Go ahead, Brian. I'm just also okay, going to, so th that there's a substantial amount of, uh, funding, um, prioritized for public housing right now and low income housing. Um, there's uh, it's called the residential retrofit program or the Wi-Fi program. It's run by the Mass Broadband Office. And uh, the public housing owner or entity has to submit uh, basically a request. And uh, the, the state is then building out RFPs that providers can respond to. So if, um, you know, there were a housing unit in Northampton that filled out that information, um, and there was an RFP we could respond to, um, that would, that's something that could help us, um, you know, get to those residents as well. I believe the that's round. Great. And I, 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 I wonder say, if you might just, yeah, go ahead. Round one is closed and I believe they're about to open up a second round. So I'm not sure if any of the, you know, the public housing or low income housing has applied for that, um, but be happy to yeah. oh. provide the information to get that to those, um, entities. Yes, I was going to say um, the ward that I represent has a very large public housing uh, building. And if you might be able to find my email address, I am the Ward 3 City Councilor, then I would be happy to pass that along to the director. Um, actually, it'd be good if you could just send it to Laura and then Laura could forward it to all the councilors. We'd all like to have that information. And if, sure. if you need, we can get to, I'm pretty sure you have, yeah, of course you do. They need to, Councilor Rothenberg? No, um, yes. I'd like everybody to have it, not just Councilor Rothenberg, the information for it. So, yeah, can, you uh, and then you can send it. Uh, we'll, share, we'll share the, uh, we'll share the, the link. Yeah, I think everybody be with you and, that. and yeah, welcome to circulate that. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Okay. Um, so no one else from uh, Councilor Barge. Yes, thank you, Councilor Glenner. Um, City Councilor Marianne LaBarge. I heard, I think it was Mr. Derek Leffelt who mentioned that the city 
has spent at least right now, you're saying a million and a half. Is that correct? No, that would be gateway. Get, well, I, I don't know what the city has spent on the feasibility study. That was Alan that was. Uh, so Alan Wolf with the city is indicating the city spent 80000 on the study. Uh, I, Gateway's invested $3 million already in in uh, Northampton. And and that's right. And it, it, yeah, it was $2.5 million last time we were here, I think. And, and now we're up to $3 million. So, yeah, we've invested $3 million in the, in the city already. Okay. I do know that the mayor <clears throat> has been also looking at other entities. And um, I'm really happy to hear about the housing. I think Ward 3 Counselor brought up an issue that I feel myself is important about the housing situation here in Northampton, and especially in Ward 3. Also, we have affordable apartments also through the Housing Authority up over in Florence. So I want to thank that counselor for bringing that up. And I want to thank um, the chair, Deb Plummer, for sharing to all of us counselors. I think that was very, very important. So thank you, Chair Plummer. And now also, what I'd like to know is how can we have access to that contract? Which, which contract are you referring to? Right. The contract that you're trying to work out with the city, you talked about it this evening, what it was all about and so forth like that. Um, Something about in Western Mass, how many employees did you say you had? 60, I think it was. No, our, our intent, so our intent is to have probably 50 to 60 by the time we're fully deployed in Massachusetts. That's not specific to Northampton, but I want to be I want to be clear that that Gateway itself is not contracting with the city of Northampton. This Gateway is a, a a private organization, and we are we are we're not leveraging any city resources at all. We're utilizing our own funds, uh, so we're not contracting with the city. We're gonna we're gonna build uh, just as any other utility would. We'll be building um, for for Gateway, and, and and we're a standalone entity, separate and distinct from the city. Right. Um, I want to ask the chair. Chair, do you have whatever that Councillor Dubs was talking about? He had read about them. Could you please send that to all of us counselors? I'd like to read that. Um, I have. That was just our website, I believe. Yeah, Let's I can see. send you the link. To okay, the I, I appreciate yeah. that very much, chair. Yeah, sure, no problem. I'll send it to you later yeah. tonight. And for okay. if you if you want to know what it is, right? It's just www.gatewayfiber.com. Right. I want to go ahead and read that very, very carefully. Being my husband, being a business owner in the city, also I have concerns as a city councilor here. Mm -hmm. uh, I have Comcast, uh, let's see, Comcast and Verizon in our home, and my husband has Verizon. I have five telephones in our home, faxes right down the line. So I want to read all about your website. I want to read about what you have done in other areas. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and we're happy to provide also resources with uh, within other communities that we've we've gone into, whether it's city councilors, you know, city officials, administrators. We're happy to provide that information. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. I'll get that link out to you, uh, Councilor Barge. Thank you, Councilor Plummer. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. that. Sure. Thanks for coming tonight. Um, well, you're welcome do... anytime. <laughs> Do any other counselors have questions? I have just one more in light of Councilor Labarge's questions. Okay. Councilor Rothenberg. So what, yes, can you just let me know one more time, because it was probably part of your presentation, but just so I really understand, what is it that you would need from the city of Northampton, you know, as a municipal entity. We we don't really need anything from the city. We're we're not okay. We're not, so you're no, no. This is just you're going to be marketing to individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll work directly to to market. As a matter of fact, you're probably going to start seeing some marketing here relatively soon. Probably when we shortly before we begin construction, 
you'll start to see some marketing. So we we aren't aren't asking for anything from the city. Just we we want to make sure that we keep you guys informed. Uh, again, that's part of our process of making sure that we're a good community partner is to make sure that you guys are informed as to what we're doing. Uh, but we, we're not requiring any resources from the city. I believe the cabinet is a private entity. Well, permitting for the underground. Yeah. Permitting, you know, we'll, we'll need permitting, which is a you know, process that every utility goes through. But in terms of, of resources, we're not asking for any resources from the city at all. Okay. And so then we also are not looking at any potential negotiations for like, a single payer kind of system is that not an option uh that would most likely not be something that gateway would entertain no okay all right thank you so much for answering all my questions and thanks to the advocates who came to speak on this as well and on the website i saw that people can sign up or for information too it, there, I'm not sure if the I'm not sure if Northampton's on there, and I should have done. I should have left before I came. Um, it says it's not available here yet. <clears throat> yeah, that's going to change. It'll change here soon. So I think probably I think once we start to make ready, then then it'll flip to it'll flip to what yeah. we call our buy flow, which basically means hey, you're you're coming, your ne your neighborhood's next, and then or you're going to get a darn it page that says that like what what you just read. And there's a little spot too where you can put your name to get yep information, even if you're not um on if it's unavailable here yeah and i would encourage i would encourage the citizens so part of how we determine where the need is is based on the signups online right so if, if there's a if there's a neighborhood that really really has a strong presence like 100 percent of the the, the the homes or businesses in that community specifically say hey we want it then that carries some weight with how we plan our process. So I would, I would always encourage citizens to to go to the website and sign up for it because that helps us determine where we're going. Okay, it's good to know. You can let people know that you'll be coming our way. Um, and uh, and then you um, so you said once you you start the process, you, you mean working on the polls and all that. I went through this in a small town, mm -hmm. um, so I. I'm kind of aware and it's exciting when you see the polls. We didn't have any internet. So when we saw the signs on the polls going up, it was pretty exciting. And then um, things did move pretty quickly after um, once they got going on it. Um, and it's nice to be able to talk to a person too when we have a problem. And well, and, around. and I'm glad you mentioned that. So our, our customer service is based here in the United States. It's not outsourced to anywhere else. Uh, the customer service comes into our office in in uh, just outside of St. Louis, Missouri, uh, and we also, I believe, will have some customer service folks up here in this area as well. Uh, once we folks uh, onboarded, um, we we do things differently than other providers. So we'll actually be our, our net net operations teams. They look if if you're having trouble, you may not even know you're having trouble, but based on the reports that they're running and the things that they're seeing in the system, you may, may be able to identify, hey, you're having lower speed than what you actually are paying for. So one of our techs will call and say, hey, there's something, something's up with either your router, you need to reset your router or whatever it is, and they'll walk you through. So we've got our customer service. You read our reviews online, our customer service scores are astronomically high because we place such a huge focus on on the customer and the customer experience. So Things like that is what sets us apart from from other providers, and and I think you guys will soon see exactly what we mean by that. I think that's um, that's very important to most people here because we've all you know been very frustrated uh, getting bounced around and not getting help after being on hold for a long time. Yeah, and as as you know, elected officials, you guys have my contact information. If you ever have an issue with a constituent or there's an issue that that I can help you resolve, please don't hesitate to reach out. It's my cell phone number. My the number on my email is my cell phone number. You can call anytime. Uh, I can't guarantee if it's at midnight on Saturday, I might, I'll be awake, but uh, we'll certainly get back to you. And, and we we pride ourselves on being responsive to folks. So don't hesitate to, to reach out and we're happy to to do what we can. I was and, just um, talking with our customer <clears throat> today. Mm -hmm. I was just talking with our customer cares team today and we average picking up the phone uh, in under 30 seconds. Wow. So. Yeah. I know sometimes with uh, other providers, you may not even be able to find a phone number. You have to go through like this chat process. And then finally somebody calls you back from 
Pakistan or something, but that's not that's not how we operate. So that's that's a huge focus for us. Uh, and as long as our CEO is where he's at, that's that's always going to be a, a huge focus for us. And then, um, do people you're hiring local people to, um, mm. fill these positions now? And yeah, um, you're looking at one of them right here, Jennifer. <laughs> just joined the team last week. Um, we have another person coming on at our our warehouse facility that we've set up in Chicopee, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. and the team will be growing as we begin to build and uh, expand into other communities. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the team is going to be made up of local people from from the area. I think you should say where you came from too. So I was a chief of staff for the mayor of Agawam, mm -hmm. and previous I was assistant town administrator in Deerfield. Oh. So local roots. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is um, really exciting to have options these days. And then um, also on your website, you said uh, streaming will be, I mean, we've all streamed instead of using cable, um, which I've been doing for a long time. So all the uh, different like Sling and uh, YouTube TV will be available. No, we don't. We don't offer streaming as part of our services. So it it is something that that we can provide you. It's it's basically an outside entity that does that. Okay. It's not specific to us. Now we do offer VoIP through our system. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually through somebody else, but it's billed through us. Uh, so if you want to have a phone, uh, you can you can have a phone through us. I think it's I want to say it's fifteen bucks a month, um, but. Um, we don't offer any specific streaming. But we'll be able to stream them. But you, yeah, I mean, we have folks that we partner with to do that, okay. uh, but we don't ex explicitly do that on our own. Thank you. Um, any other questions from counselors? Okay. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to be here again. Uh, again, don't hesitate to reach out to us if if you guys have any questions or, or need any additional information. We're uh, we're excited about this being our first uh, foray into Massachusetts, and we're looking forward to getting getting it started on the right path. And and uh, you know our local team here is very well versed in in Massachusetts and all the things it's going to require. So we're excited about it, looking forward to it, and uh, hopefully you guys will be just as excited as we are. Thank you, Councilor Barge. Oh, Councilor Barge, do you have a yeah. question? Or... Thank you very much. Um, I have one more question um, for Derek, please. Sure. Did I hear, what would be the cost for our city to go into the gateway? Um, what are you you mentioned about? a price that about our city, what we've already spent, which I know, okay. Oh, oh How I believe much would it cost our city for you to come in and be able to give people an option to take your service. This would not be mandatory, correct? Well, so I believe I believe Mr. Wolf mentioned earlier that the the city's feasibility study suggested it was a thirty million dollar investment for the city. That's not that's not relative to Gateway, right? So Gateway, we're we're using our own money. Uh, we're we're going to deploy our own capital to deploy these networks. So in terms of what we're we're going to we're not going to charge the city anything. We, we won't be charging anyone other than the customers that ultimately receive our service the monthly fee. Okay, so it's not mandatory through your company. Correct, right. Yeah, if you, okay. want to continue, yeah if you want to continue to use Comcast, you're, you're more than welcome to. I believe that we have a superior product, and I think the citizens will soon see that. But, um, yeah, if you want to continue to use Comcast, that's certainly your prerogative, and it's not a, it's, it's not a mandatory thing. Okay, that, that's important because I do have residents in my ward and many people I know in the city who are complaining constantly about how expensive it is for them to even run their computers now. And every time you turn around, it's going up on Comcast, going up on Verizon. I can't tell you what I hear from people. They just can't continuously afford it. So... I'm glad to hear that you're here tonight, and thank you. And I want to look at your website, go over that very clearly. And I'm also going to hook on with a lot of people that I know to get on your website. So thank you, dear. Yeah, you bet. So this will be an option 
Comcast will still be in Northampton, but this will be an option now for people who want to get away from Comcast. And right. so there'll be two companies here right. now you can choose from. Yep. That's great. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> yeah. Okay, seeing as there's no more questions, um, I want to thank you all for coming up here and coming sure. out this way again and um, and for picking our, our city to be one of your pilot programs, the startup right. programs in Massachusetts. So well, we're excited about it. Don't hesitate to let us know if you need something from us, okay? Okay, we will do. Well, thank you guys. Thank you much. There's no items referred to committee. Any new business? from anyone in the community resources? Okay, no new business. Um, I just wanna remind everybody that there is no August meeting scheduled. So our next meeting will be um, in the third uh, Monday in September. And um, would anybody like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Um, so we're adjourned. Thanks everybody.